If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about book recommendations that are dark academia. It's the fall, I feel like it's the season, going back to school, it puts you in the mood to read them. And I would love to actually hear some of your favorite ones in the comment section because I'm looking for more to add to my TBR, which I will be mentioning some of the ones that are on my pile to be read uh, at the end of the video. But we're going to start with some of my favorite ones, then some of the ones that I personally didn't care for, but just because I didn't love them doesn't mean you're going to feel the same. So I'll just explain what the topic is about, uh, what the book is about, the summary, and then what I liked and liked so you can make your own decisions. I feel like I've seen lists online and I don't always agree because I saw a little life on some of the list and I don't see it. How is that dark academia? You have four friends meeting in a school but like that's it. It has nothing to do with studying in school. So let me know because to me it's like obviously a school setting, often university, a bunch of snobby rich, unlikable characters. Uh, again, a focus on the studying and then something dark. So like a murder mystery is very often the topic. So we're gonna go through my list of the ones I liked first. I can never tell if you see the reflection of the lights. So we're just gonna remove these just in case. So the first book that pops into my mind every time we mention Dark Academia, The Secret History by Donna Tart. I feel like this is the book the Dark Academia book. And like I mentioned, you have everything. You have a uh, university setting. Main character is not rich, but he is trying to become friends with the people in his class who are all rich and unsufferable. And uh, they're learning old languages, quirky uh, professor teaching them uh, Latin, Greek, and they're all very snobbish. <laughs> and then he gets sucked in into the drama and then there is one of them dying. I'm gonna keep this vague. Obviously everything else is going to be spoiler free. So you slowly figure out what happened and it's very, very character driven. Uh, even though there's obviously a murder, it's still very character driven and I overall did enjoy it. I do feel like there's a ton of hype behind it. So personally, it wasn't a five stars, but I did overall enjoy it. I do think it's good. And if you enjoy Dark Academia, you need to check out that book because I feel like it's our Bible. So speaking of Bible, <laughs> Babel uh, by RF Kwan. It just came out, I just read it and it was fantastic. If you enjoyed Academia, the first 300 pages are going to be your jam. Um, you're following a main character called Robin who is a young Chinese boy and when his whole family uh, dies from a disease, a man becomes his guardian and brings him to uh, the UK where he will be thought languages think Latin and Greek at first to uh, prepare him to go to Oxford where he will learn uh, even more languages because in that version of our world, uh, language is intrinsically linked to magic. So you have to intimately know a language, and in this case Mandarin, uh, in order to translate and then use that as magic. <laughs> it sounds more complicated than it is. Um, but yes, you have to like know that language fully dreaming, that's what they say, like if you can dream in that language, then you know it enough to use it uh, with magic. So that's what you're following him through for the beginning of the book. A lot of studying, I think the most negative reviews I've seen are people complaining that it feels like a university class, which this is exactly what I liked about the book. So I really, really enjoyed the beginning. Uh, the vibes in the beginning also of like almost found family with the other classmates because obviously the UK, what do they do? England, they uh, take young kids from different countries to bring them uh, because they know the languages. But once again, a team of colonialism, which is something that the author seems to really enjoy because she did the same with the puppy war. So I really liked the first 400 pages. I just vlogged it. It's spoiler free for anyone interested. Um, and the first 400 pages, I'm like five stars. I'm loving this. And then you can see me at the end, the last update. I'm like super deflated. I didn't hate the ending, but I feel like it's gonna really, really divide people. Um, but I still think it's absolutely worth reading. I gave it four stars. I'm, I'm making it sound like it's horrible. Uh, four stars, but yes, if you like Dark Academia, the beginning is so strong and you will absolutely love it whenever they're learning languages and the, uh, where the words are from, how do they link between languages. I thought it was fascinating. So if you like Dark Academia, you need to check out Babel. Another one of my personal favorite is If We Were Villains. There's a few different covers. Uh, mine is somewhere, by the way, like the piles of books is because I'm redoing my library. It's not my normal setting, but I really like the one I have. I feel like I never see anyone with it and I think it looks very moody. It works with uh, the content because you are following, once again, uh, a group, it's always a small group too, of students in university. They are all actors learning uh, Shakespeare plays. I am not familiar with Shakespeare's. I've never read any of his plays, never seen one. Uh, I grew up only speaking French, so like we never had to study them in school. Even so, I still absolutely adore this book, but I feel like if you have seen them or read them, you're probably gonna enjoy it even more. But I recommend the audiobook if you're someone that enjoys audiobooks too, because obviously the actors are playing 
the scenes, also a lot of quotes, so there's like the whole passion behind it. And there's, once again, a murder mystery. One of them uh, is murdered whenever they're under influence <laughs> of things. And uh, you're trying to piece together what happened and it was fantastic. I think this is like top three at least, like if not number one uh, in that genre. So I highly recommend this one, absolutely adored it. And yes, definitely one of my favorites. Now we're gonna go with three that are like a little bit of a stretch, but I really enjoy them and I feel like they still fit in the context. Kind of. Uh, the first one would be Vengeful by V. Schwab. The first book is technically uh, vicious, but I feel like book two focuses more on the school. So we're going to start with villains. It's supposed to be a trilogy. So far, two books are out. It was meant to be a duology at first. So I feel like you can totally read it as a duology. Obviously, I'm still waiting for the third book. Uh, but you're following two friends who met in university and they figured out a way to develop superpowers. But instead of becoming superheroes, they become super villains. And they, there are flashbacks basically uh, to them being young and them now in the present time, uh, not liking each other, basically fighting each other. So there is a little bit, I feel like in the first book of Dark Academia, but definitely book two, you get a lot more flashbacks to them in university when this starts happening. So. I think it's a little bit of a stretch, but I think it works. You definitely get some vibes, especially in book two, which I don't know why it's the unpopular opinion to prefer book two over book one, but personally, my favorite. You also get Marcella, who's my favorite supervillain. Like page one of book two, she arrives and it's like, she did nothing wrong. I love her. So I <laughs> would recommend that one. And then another one that I also read recently and fell in love with it is Pyronesi. It's technically magical realism, which is usually not my cup of tea, but I feel like it has... Dark Academia vibes, kind of. A little bit of a stretch because there's no like school setting or anything. You're following a character who is very confused in the beginning. So if you don't understand anything for the first like 20 pages, it's normal. I, I didn't know and I almost put down the book forever after like three pages. <laughs> so give it a little bit of a time. Uh, but you're following a character who uh, wakes up in this huge house uh, and they just try to survive day to day. They have no memory of what's going on. And then there's this one person that they meet. He's always well-dressed. Like, you know, he's like a university snobby person. So it kind of works with that. And then towards the end, that's definitely where you get uh, the vibes more. I don't want to say anything, but it's such a quick read. It's like 200 something pages. And even though it's, it's a stretch to include it in here, I do feel like if you read it, you're going to stand towards the end. You definitely get the vibes of like, you know, research, university, it, I think it counts. I think it counts. <laughs> the last one that I like that I think might be a bit of a stretch, it's dark and it's a school setting. So I feel like it counts. Uh, it's Confessions, which is a uh, book, a Japanese book that was translated in English. And uh, it's also a movie. So if you want to watch it, I recommend it. Haven't seen it yet, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. I need to, I I'm just terrible at actually finishing movies. So this one you're following uh, 13 year old kids though. So I feel like that's why I'm like, is it dark academia? I feel like in my head it's more university setting, but who cares? Uh, you're following the story through five different point of views, but it starts with the teacher uh, who's telling the kids in her class that she knows that two of them murdered her kid. So you definitely get the darkness, the murder mystery vibes. And then you go through five point of views, including the two kids that murdered uh, her toddler and then trying to figure out what happened. I think it's worth the read. It was a it was slightly repetitive towards the end because again, the same story-ish, five point of views, uh, but you get enough new information that it's totally worth uh, reading. And yeah, I, I don't want to say anything else because it's kind of a mystery to academia. So definitely check it out if that sounds interesting to you. I'm going to go quickly through uh, some of the ones that I personally didn't love because a lot of these are popular. And again, just because I didn't love them doesn't mean you're going to feel the same. The first one would have to be Atlas Six, which I want to preface this by mentioning that I read the first like self-published version. It was since picked up by a publishing company. It was edited and republished. So I can't tell uh, you my opinion on that new version. I've heard some of the changes that were made, but I don't think it would change my opinion that much. But you're following uh, six kids. Uh, university setting, once again, unsufferable characters. That That is definitely <laughs> well done. I mean, I feel like if you would like Dark Academia, you like these kind of characters because if you don't like unlikable ones, it's not a genre that's gonna be for you, but uh, they're competing to get a spot. Uh, magical school setting, I didn't mention that. There's even a magical uh, library, which I'm a huge fan of. I don't feel like it was utilized enough in general in this whole, honestly, not utilized enough is a summary of my opinion <laughs> with the whole book. I just felt like it was a little bit all over the place. Uh, the good bits were not there enough. And then so much negative, like I 
like an unlikable character, but they were too much almost in this case. And the ending was all over the place. And again, that's something that was apparently reworked, but personally could not get into it because of that. I'm not planning on continuing the series, but if you like Dark Academia setting, magical school, a bunch of students fighting for a spot, you will most likely enjoy this, but personally it wasn't for me. Another one that's incredibly popular is Night House. Unfortunately, once again, didn't really work for me. Uh, you have the Dark Academia vibes because university setting, you have a main character who is sent to kind of spy on a fraternity and like sorority in this university that there seems to be like magic, some murder mysteries happening and she's trying to figure out what happens. But I really didn't care for the main character. Here I am telling you that if you like Dark Academia, you have to enjoy unlikable characters, but she's, again, she's so unlikable, not in a good way. I only finished the book because of Darlington, who is like a side character. I think most people would agree that he's a much better character to follow. And there's a problematic scene in there that kind of ruined it for me. Uh, but overall, I just really struggled to finish it. I was really, really bored, which I wasn't expecting because an adult book by the author was something I was looking forward to. And like urban fantasy was definitely something I wanted to read more of, but there wasn't enough university or like the magical school, it's barely mentioned. And I just, was bored, unfortunately. I flip-flopped between the audiobook and physical book to try to finish it. And to give you an idea, the murder mystery is solved and there's still like three hours left into the audiobook of like nothing. <laughs> so I was just very, very bored personally. Uh, it seems to be by far a popular opinion. So you probably should try it if that sounds appealing to you. Uh, but yeah, I'm not planning on continuing the series. Unfortunately for me, it wasn't meh. The next one, I really loved the beginning, but then it kind of just flopped for me towards the end. It got too weird, not in a good way. I do like a good weird book, but Bunny, it got, it got weird, weird. Um, don't want to spoil it, but you follow following character who uh, definitely, you don't know if she's being a little too snobby or if it's the girls that she's in school with that are too weird. They, they call themselves Bunny, which reminds me of my own teenage years where, um, Girls would call each other chaton, which is like kitten. I just remember cringing. So I did relate to her wondering what was wrong with them for calling each other bunny and just being extremely weird. Uh, but then she kind of ends up becoming one of them. That's all I'm gonna say. And things get very, very, very strange. You do get, again, the vibes of Dark Academia because of them being in graduate school and like the stress of that and then <laughs> It just gets so strange. You don't want to know anything. I can't say anything, seriously. Um, but yeah, it, the ending, there was so much potential, but for me it was meh. But yeah, if you really like Dark Academia and you're looking desperately for another one and you like weird books, essentially, I would check out Bunny, but the ending will divide people. Uh, the rest, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through them. Uh, we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I enjoyed uh, The Night Circus by her overall. Her writing was beautiful. In this one, I feel like it might be a bit of a stretch to mention Dark Academia, but it starts in a university setting. Uh, the main character uh, finds a book in uh, the library that seems to say, like tell his life story. Things end up being way too vague and it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. I struggle to follow, I struggle to care. And I keep comparing uh, the book to this video clip of the raccoon that finds um, cotton candy. I'm doing this because in French it's ba 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 ba, which is like father's beard. <laughs> so I'm like this, cotton candy, and puts it in water and it just dissolves. That's what her book is for me. It's like, it's fluffy, it's pretty, it sounds so appealing, but then there's just no substance. Like I just didn't get it. But if you like like doors to different universe, uh, very heavy on uh, the prose, you might want to check out uh, The Starless Sea. It's a little bit dark to me, I think. Uh, the Magicians, I think would work also. This one is an adult fantasy. Um, people were calling it like depressed adult Harry Potter when it first came out, which kind of. Um, I did enjoy, once again, the beginning because you definitely get that school setting, uh, learning magic. And it feels pretty dark because it seems very dangerous. And then the ending goes in a weird direction. Unfortunately, it, it isn't part of my favorites because the ending is weird, but I also read book two and I didn't care for what the author decided to do with a SA scene that seemed to be a good thing for the female character. So I'm not continuing the series. I'm just throwing it out there because some people do enjoy it. So you might like this book if you like Dark Academia. Um, a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I don't think the author is for me, but I thought I would give it a shout out because this one is YA, so it's not really university, but it's like a private school where uh, the students go and live. And if you enjoy a school setting, magical school setting, that is always dangerous, like you can't even sleep because everything is trying to kill you, 
this might sound appealing to you. You definitely get the snobby character. The main character is kind of herself also snobby. Like she doesn't want to mix up with everyone, but like she thinks people don't want to mix up with her, but like she might be partially responsible. But I felt like there was a lot of telling instead of showing and I really didn't care for the romance which seems to come out of nowhere so personally it wasn't for me but a lot of people do enjoy it so I would check it out if you enjoy uh YA fantasy. Uh the last one I want to mention I'm mentioning it so you don't read it because <laughs> I just read uh Dead Poet Society which I thought had been written before the movie so I like read the book watched the movie and don't do it uh it was the opposite it was written after the movie and I don't know what is wrong with the author because she added a couple scenes that are super problematic <laughs> like why did you do that there's a scene where um in the movie the, the character um the, the girl he has a crush on is sleeping and he's like petting her hair and like kissing her forehead which is not okay but like it's not that bad uh compared to the book because in the book he basically grabs her uh, while she's kissing someone else, so she won't know it's him doing it. I actually grabbed it because I wanted to show you, it's a tiny book that seems like perfect why a book to read in high school. So that's why it's like even more problematic that these scenes were added. There's another one where uh, the kids, so they will be distracted during a quiz, the, the teacher, which is Robin Williams in the movie, like it doesn't work with him at all. Uh, he's basically showing pictures of girls in like, like bending down, you can see their underwear under a skirt kind of thing. Why did she add scenes like that in the book? Like, why? Uh, because once again, it feels like something that people would read in high school. Like it's less than 200 pages and like, why? I, I don't understand. So don't read it, watch the movie instead. Last but not least, I wanted to include some on the screen that I am planning on reading because I want to know what you think about them. If I should put them high on my TBR. And I would love to know once again, uh, your favorite ones in the comment section. So the first one is Vita Nastra, which is number one on my list. I'm reading it this month, guaranteed. Uh, this one is magical school setting. I've heard that it's going to be one of the weirdest book I've ever read, like super heavy on the like dark academia vibes. And I'm looking forward to it. I I'm, I'm looking forward to being confused. It's okay. I, I love magical school setting and dark academia. So I think this is gonna be exactly that. <laughs> uh, the next one I have is These Violent Delights, which I believe uh, it's also a gay romance. And again, uh, university setting dark academia so I think that should also work. I've heard that the library of the unwritten is also kind of dark academia vibes so these are some of the ones that I'm looking forward to reading that I think work for this team. Uh, again feel free to comment in the comment section all about your favorite ones, your opinion on the ones that I've mentioned because I'm always very interested in discussing this with you. I will be putting on the screen uh, the video that I mentioned where I read Babel, I highly recommend you check that out. And I'm also gonna include uh, my fall TBR, so if you want to look uh, at the books I'm planning on reading within the next 10, 10, 10, uh, two months, <laughs> definitely check that out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye. 10 months, Emily, 10, really. <laughs>